Internet. This is Toy Thomas, and I'm so excited to interview this um, author who's doing something really special that we're going to be talking about today. And his name is Russell Nolte. So, hi, Russell. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Russell. Um, I run a company called Wannabe Press, which is a webcomic company. Uh, so we have 14 web comics that release throughout the week. Now we have a couple. We have strips. We have sci-fi, horror, and fantasy books. Nice. Uh, yeah. So and everything has sort of like its own day. So we have you know fantasy Monday and Friday, sci-fi Tuesday and Thursday, horror Friday. Sorry, horror Wednesday. So if you come to the site, you're going to get something new every day. And uh, we're doing a Kickstarter that's launching today. This is helping me take my mind off it. So thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. So I, I want to get to that, but I also want to try to get to know you a little bit, let you know the whole world get to know you a bit. So I have a little bit of an icebreaker question that's just going to take your mind away from Kickstarter altogether. Awesome. I always ask authors this question, coffee, tea, other and why for me it's tea yes my wife is tea i'm coffee um because i get up early uh so my wife's more of a night person i'm more of a morning person so i'm up at like six and i'm starting work at six because i work at home so pretty much to get me from six until any other human being is working in like 10 that right. i know <laughs> i need something to fill those hours and coffee is the only thing that i can I would inject it into my veins if I could. <laughs> well, um, that, that would work. Uh, I'm not sure what the side effects would be. <laughs> but, um, okay. So, um, now let's get into, you have a special project that you're working on right now. We've already mentioned Kickstarter. So, go ahead and tell me something about it. Sure. So, um, the book is called Katrina Hates the Dead. It is about a girl who gets sick of living during the apocalypse, so she sets out to hell to confront the devil and get some damn peace and quiet in her life. So it's sort of like a very sacrilegious Left Behind. If you guys remember, uh, Left Behind was a series, a Christian series about everyone being raptured and then right. we're left behind. Right. There's a, a show called The Leftovers on Showtime now that's sort of the same thing. Oh, okay. uh, but ours is much like funny and sacrilegious in a very different kind of way. So we released the book uh, a couple. We did a couple of failed Indiegogo campaigns a couple of years ago for it, and then we got a publisher semi interested, and we did a short run for a Comic Con 2013. We sold out of 2013, and then it just sort of sat stagnating uh, for a year. And then I launched my publishing company, Want to Be Prepped, and we did a successful Kickstarter last year. And this was the absolute first thing that I wanted to do next if we were if we were successful. So um, here we are today, launching the Kickstarter with you. And and how is the Kickstarter going? I, I know that I personally went on and looked into it. I'm very excited about this project. So how's it going? Uh, it's difficult to say right now. Um, I'm kind of comparing it. I'm kind of comparing this entire Kickstarter, last year's Kickstarter to what I expect to do today. So last year we had no idea what we were doing at all. We just kind of begged our friends and fam my friends and family to help me out, and God bless them, they did. They came back in a in a big way. That's awesome. Uh, yes, uh, very appreciative of that. But this year. You can only beg your friends so much and family. Yeah. So, and even if I can continue to beg my friends and family, I don't necessarily want to. I want to build my own audience. And so we spent a lot of money uh, and time and effort, you know, building our mailing list and building our website and building our Facebook page and doing interviews and doing cons, uh, we do a lot of comic cons to get the word out there and you know, releasing a lot of promotional material and getting guest pinups and doing all of that stuff pre-work 
that even though we did a little bit last time, it definitely was not anywhere near what we did this time. So um, we expect a bigger turnout by a huge margin because of how much work that we did. Because we're hoping that all the, most of the people that pro pledged last time are going to come back this time. You know, statistics say about 70% of your audience is going to come back and do the next Kickstarter. And so that means I should start with X amount of money and then I can build from that amount. And based on, you know, all the marketing and all of that other stuff, we're hoping to hit two to 300% goal would be good. And uh, right now, I don't know how we're doing because I haven't looked at it in the last 20 minutes. I keep seeing notifications pop up. So let's hope there's big numbers in that oh, thing. Yeah. Done. Yeah, that's probably good that you're not looking at it, but it's good that you're getting the notifications. I mean, I have a good feeling about this project. So, I mean, everything that I've seen is very impressive. The storyline looks solid. Um, there's definitely some humor in it. The artwork is amazing. And so I, I have high hopes for this project just as you do. So I, I wish you all the success with it. Yeah, I mean, the artist itself, he, he, he drew a book called Son of Dathomir, which is Darth Maul, a Darth Maul Star Wars book for Dark Horse. So oh, nice. this is his first book, though, that he ever did. He sort of launched his career with this book. Then now he's working for Avatar and Dark Horse and a bunch of others. He's way too busy to even feel my emails most of the time. Right. Well, I mean, that's good. Like I said, it's, it's good artwork, so it's good that you got someone, you know, with some real, you know, good talent, a definite... Um, style so that's good all right so i have a question about this current project that you're working on and it, it is called katrina hates the dead right unfortunately it used to be called something else but okay. you can't use that okay well this project i guess what i want to know now i know you're promoting it right now you have the kickstarter but when you completed it when you saw the finished product how did you feel about it i mean obviously you kind of felt good about it, at least enough to want to put it out there. But how do you feel about this project? All right, so how I feel about it now and how I felt about it then were very, well, they're pretty much the same. The, the thing with any project is you have to love it a hundred and crazy percent. Yeah. Because if you don't love it a hundred and crazy percent, nobody's going to love it. And at the end of the day, you're definitely not going to love it a hundred and crazy percent because of all the faults that you see in it, all the foibles that you see, yeah. the length of time. I mean, we finished this project in 2011 or 2012, so it's now been three years. I mean, it's very hard to keep that kind of energy for a project and love for a project three years after you finished it. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. the, the thing with comics is it's different than other, like doing a novel, because you see it come in page after page after page. So every time you see a new page, it's amazing. Yeah. The problem with the comic is you're not in control. The artist is in control. So while you're doing the comic until you're done, the knot in your stomach grows because your financial commitment grows over time. And if the and, and the need to have the artist grows over time, their power grows over time. And if they just stop a project in the middle, you're kind of screwed. So F SG3 comes in, you're super excited, but then you're like, oh my God, what if he leaves now? Oh my God, what if I can't get it now? Oh my God, what if he gets his hand cut off or mangled in a, th what, what, what happens if he's done? I can't just write, a th I can't write that problem away. Right. You know, I can't just get another, I mean, I can get another artist, but it's not going to be the same right. to have someone draw in that style than to have someone who has that style. Exactly. So, there was a great sense of relief when I finished it. Um, and it's an incredible book. I still can't believe that um, I found an artist who could take the thing that I wrote and deliver the exact thing that I wanted on the page. Like, e to like even how character movement was without me telling him how to do it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's good because you mentioned, you know, that whole relationship between the writer and the and the artist. And like you said, it's not the same with novels. I mean, I write novels and yes, I have something kind of like that with my editor, but it's not that same. So I think that's, you know, good that you mentioned that 
you know, from a graphic novel or comic book standpoint, it is a bit different. So I, I can imagine that sense of relief you felt. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I write novels too. So at the end of it, if you don't, if the editor doesn't do their job like an editor didn't do for me, you just find another editor. Like right. the words are your words, you know. Right. You could sit there and reword it as many times as you want. It's all you. Right. And even if you get like locked in syndrome, you could still eye flutter your book to existence. But with a not with a graphic novel, you can't. I actually draw a book for my website now, and it's a much different. All of it's a much different experience than actually giving your book to somebody else and saying, "Hey." By the way, you draw this, it's 100% in your hands. And even when it's done, the credit mostly falls on them. Like, the, the people compliment the art. They don't really compliment the story until they've read it. What they see is the art. Right. Who they're gonna meet is the artist, more so than the creator and the writer. As opposed to a book, you go to a book fair, People want to meet the writer. Right. You go to a Comic Con, people want to meet the artist. The yeah. number one question I get asked is, Did you draw this? And I'm like, No, I draw this crappy comic called Gherkin Boy on my website. This one. No, it's not. Just open the front page, you'll see. I did not, but I did create it and edit it and publish it and do everything else but draw it. And they're like, Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Just not the same reaction. Yeah, I can imagine that's a that's that's not something that I've experienced yet. I I wouldn't mind experiencing it. I think it would be cool to write a comic book, but it's it's nice to get a reality check from someone who's done it. You know, it's it's something that you have to think about. You're right. It's the artist who people initially identify with. So, thank you for that perspective. No um, the next question kind of falls in line with what's happening right now. Um, I can see you've got some of your artwork and your, you know, your stuff in the background. I've got some of mine. Um, when we as artists are promoting, I think there's a small part of us, whether we believe in superstitions or not, we have that lucky charm. I know what mine is. Um, for one project, I have a, a necklace with angel wings that I use to promote that particular project. So I'm wondering for this, do you have something kind of like a lucky charm or is, a signature piece that you keep with you during promotion? Not during promotion, but I have a sales lucky charm that I got when I used to um, work at my old company. This is um, Amazingly Brave Klaus the Tiger. I <laughs> put it in my pocket here, and it helps me sell things and keep me on track. It's my always be closing tiger. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> okay. So we talked about your current project, which I'm very excited about, but I want to get into more of you as a writer. Um, you, you said that you, you also write novels on top of the graphic novels and comic books that you do. So what is your favorite part of the writing process? What do you like most about being a writer? Um, getting the voices out of my head and to shut up for a minute is the number one thing I like. I am not a uh, pre-planner so much. Um, I am not an outliner so much. You're a pantser. <laughs> yes, uh, I pretty much just freestyle what I have, but I'm uh, kind of like Stephen King where he says he doesn't outline, he just knows his character so well. So this is a very simple process. I, have my, I develop my characters in my brain until they are so alive that they can have conversations with me, and then so alive that they start nagging me to write about them. And then I get so irritated at them that I figure out what the worst possible situation I could possibly put them in is, and that's what they put them in. <laughs> so for Ichabod, he's a psychopath who escapes a mentalist, who, who, uh, who, uh, who does not want to be a hero. And the thing that he has to do is become a hero during the apocalypse and save, like, and escape and become this hero that he does not want to be. Katrina, the thing she hates most is monsters. And so she is in this area that is full of monsters. Uh, um, and 
she gets sick of it. Um, pretty much goes down the line that the, whatever my best books are, the thing that the character wants least is the thing that ends up happening because they irritate me until I just throw them in the worst position possible. Wow, that is not a perspective I've heard before, but it makes total sense. So, and it, I bet it works too. Um, because I had this book before, the last book that I wrote, the reason that I don't outline is because of this. I was writing a book, the like the last, very last book I wrote, and I got to a point about two thirds of the way done, and I was like, oh, well, that's not what I expected to happen. That's very interesting. I guess that's going to happen now because I didn't follow this thing. It was just such a nice moment of jarring realization that I can move the story in this direction that was completely unexpected. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've heard a lot of people who that who don't, you know, use outlines or don't, you know, stick to them strictly that that's that creativity, that flexibility you have to come in and out and, you know, let the story go where it wants to go. And for, you know, people who can write that way, kudos, because I've tried it, I have to plan, but that's another subject. But I, on the other side, like, kind of want to be able to plan. Like, I would like to be able to plan more and not just be flying by the seat of my pants. The thing is, is I cut a third of my book once it's done. Off the top, like, I write a book and I cut a third of it, like, the first time through. And then I write up back up to that level, and then I cut a third of it again. And I keep writing and then cutting a third of the book until I've got something that makes sense. So my, my post-production process serves because I'm constantly cutting my book and redoing it. So if I could plan a little bit better, I wouldn't have to rewrite a book five times. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that probably goes on with, with the next question, because I think you may have answered it already. I was going to say, what part of the process do you not like? I'm going to guess maybe it's the cutting of the story and having to rewrite it. Actually, I like that part, too. Oh. The part I don't like is the minor editorial part. So once, you're done, once you've gotten a book that you like, and you send it off to your editor, and they've done developmental notes, and they're done developmental notes, and they're on these little, like, like nitpicky, like, notes that's like, hey, you should change this thing around. I'm just, I go back, I'm like, you just change it around. That's why I have an editor. Like, you change it, tell me you change it, and I'll let you know if it was good or not, because I just, I hate that part. I am not a detailed person. I can't do proofreading or any of that little stuff. But development notes, changing the book around, doing all that stuff, I'm actually cool with. It's until that like last 10%, which is what makes or breaks a book. That's the part that I hate. Yeah, I, I can't say that that's my favorite part either. So I can definitely sympathize with you there. <laughs> now, now I want to get into you, um, kind of, you know, you as a reader. I, I believe that all authors should be readers. Um, I'm amazed at how many of them aren't, but I want to know a little bit about what you like to read and, you know, why you like to read it. Uh, so I spent the first, like, last five or six years writing pretty much so much that I didn't have any time to read. And now that I'm more, now that I have such a library built up, I can actually read, and it's awesome. So um, I like audiobooks. Oh, me too. <laughs> uh, I listen to audiobooks a lot. Um, I it's for memoirs. So for like nonfiction, I like listening to audiobooks. For uh, novels, I like John Green type books. Or um, I'm I, I'm trying to get more into like actually reading a lot more like hard sci-fi. I prefer like soft sci-fi or like grounded sci-fi or like coming of age stuff. Kind of like the kind of movies that I like writing. Like that's the kind of books, I think you should read it, the books that you like writing. That, that, that you should write the books you like reading, because that's where you're going to like the best. If you're willing to invest 500 words over and over, five, five, ugh, 100,000 words over and over and over and over again, and reading the same kind of thing, it's a pretty good chance that you're like writing that sort of stuff too. You know, writing for mandates or writing for like whatever you think is hot or popular right now, is a path to disaster. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. You should definitely 
write the type of stuff that you read because like you said the more you read it the more you'll enjoy writing and you'll probably be better at it too right yeah and i mean I, for comics i'm a lot more wide range because comics take a lot less time to read maybe not less time to appreciate but you could finish a whole graphic novel in a couple hours or a day of yeah. reading so I'm kind of all over the place with comic books. Like I like Saga, I like Neil Gaiman. Like I like I like pretty I'm pretty, pretty much read any comic books that are a little bit lighter fare or a little bit odder fare. Doesn't necessarily need to be like in one specific genre. Like it is for books. Like with books, if I'm going to spend 500 pages reading your book, like I, it's going to be in a genre that I like for sure. Yeah, I think. I think a lot of people who, you know, bounce back and forth from, you know, books to comic books and graphic novels kind of feel that way, too. So that's good. Now, the next question um, I have is um, <laughs> this is another one that some authors like or some don't. Um, this, especially with this current project that you have, um, have you imagined or even thought or dreamed if it were turned into maybe a movie or a TV series, like how would you envision that? I mean, do you have a studio picked out, like actors, music? Uh, um, I want an anime movie. That's mm. what I would love to have. I mean, I, not that I wouldn't like a hundred million dollar movie to be done with it, but I would like an animated movie to be done with Katrina, if anything, because there's, special effects would be very, very big. I know most people have only read the, the first little bit of the book, but trust me, it gets much bigger and grander. About three issues more in, you're, there's, there are scenes that you just can't pull off unless it's a $150 million, $200 million movie, which would be a very nice paycheck, but I think best would be like an animated movie out of Japan. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think a lot of um, comic book um, genres uh, or like um, graphic novels, I, I feel I find that I enjoy the animated, you know, versions of the stories that come out as opposed to a lot of the live action films. I mean, don't get me wrong, Marvel's doing their thing right now. But for me, a lot of those stories that are turned into visual media come off better animated. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's usually true for me. I mean, just look at the Attack on Titan animated show versus the Attack on Titan live movie reviews. Yeah. Not fair. Look at Avatar, The Last Airbender TV show versus Avatar, The Last Airbender. I don't think movie. that even counts. Don't, you shouldn't even mention that one. But yeah, you're right. I mean, sometimes you got to stick with, to me, what, what kind of melds together. I mean, it's already... A visual medium to begin with because it's a graphic novel it's a comic book so it would make sense to transition better into an anime so that's good and I'm just curious since I know I've kind of thought about it do you have any advice for someone who would maybe want to write their own comic book or graphic novel anyone aspiring to you know get into this line of writing uh, yes, I actually have written for seven years on my blog about writing for comics. So if you like my, you should go to my website, want to be pressed to my blog section. There's nothing but writing for comics stuff and writing books for like seven years. But the biggest thing for anybody is to build an audience starting now, today. Don't wait to build an audience until you are ready. Do short stories, build up, do your own stuff, find somebody that you, that, that you like that will just do a short with you, do shorts, do big stuff. Don't wait to build an audience. Go to cons, do anything you can do to start building a fan base because that fan base is what's going to support you if you can ever, ever make this a career. It's not going to be Random House. It's not going to be Penguin. It's not going to be us. It's going to be the people that support you and like your work are going to be the ones buying your work. And you need to find the 30,000 people who will give you five dollars a year for your book? Like, that's the whole goal. It's like that's my whole goal. Thirty thousand people who will pay me five dollars for work. That's a very decent salary. Yeah, and then and it sounds like very good sound advice. And it, it's even a bit of a if, if you think about it, it's kind of a business plan too. Like if this is your ultimate goal, this is what you should be pursuing. So that's 
that's wonderful advice. Thank you for that. And that's pretty much all I have. I'm glad we got to, you know, talk about it. I'm very excited about this. So before we close it up, just tell everyone, you know, where they can go to support, where they can learn more about you. Just, you know, be selfish and just talk about where to go to find out more about you. You want to see where we have where we are right now on the Kickstarter? Let's look. Sure. Let's, look at it. Right. Let's go to the website. Sorry, my uh, my hands on here. Right. So it's Kickstarter is where the if you guys know Kickstarter, it's uh, just go and look for Katrina hates the dead print run. The book is a hundred percent done. We are looking for money to uh, to fund the print run. Uh, we're at $980 right now, so we got three extra backers since we started here. Uh, so thank you guys, new backers. Uh, please, you guys back, because uh, that's why I do all of this promo, to make new fans and talk to awesome people like you. Um, so we also have comic books come out every day on our website, www.wannabepress.com. I have a blog that comes in a couple of times a week on the site. Um, we have fantasy, sci-fi, scripts, and um, art and uh, horror, and also um, anthologies. So stuff for you all day, every day. Um, we have Facebook page, Tumblr, Twitter, all wannabe press. I'm public on Facebook, Russell Nolte, two L's, N-O-H-E-L-T-Y. Um, I uh, have Instagram. Pretty much, if you if you have, if, however you want to find me, I will be there. I believe that you should be wherever your audience is, even if it's fractured and fragmented. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So um, you heard them, people of the internet of the world, go out there, check out the Kickstarter, and support it. And that's all I have. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.